Hi, everybody. I am Lisa Purius, Executive Director of the Indiana Veterinary Medical Association. And as you know, we've started a monthly Zoom interview with an IV Mate volunteer. We have so many great volunteers out there. And we thought we would start by highlighting our IV Mate leadership team. Today, I am pleased to welcome Dr. Aaron Johnson, who is the IVMA president elect. He was elected at the IVMA membership meeting uh, back in early February of 2021. Dr. Johnson is a veterinarian and a research scientist in uh, R&D at Elenco Animal Health. So welcome, Dr. Johnson. Thanks, Lisa. It's good to be here. Great. Um, so, you know, I start every interview with, um, tell us your story. You know, everyone has a story and a journey about how they got to their career, how they got to veterinary medicine. So tell us your journey. Sure. So like many, many other veterinarians, I developed an interest in being a vet at an early age, probably around the age of eight. And that was just through taking our dog to the veterinarian for its annual checkups and, uh, just kind of watching and seeing what they did. I was able to get first directly introduced to veterinary medicine when I was 14. I was in Boy Scouts at the time and um, wanted to do the veterinary science merit badge. So part of that requirement was to spend some time in a veterinary clinic. So I started doing some shadowing on Saturday mornings. And I think that was the first time I really discovered I had a passion for the medicine and the surgery and the science behind veterinary medicine. So uh, after I completed the merit badge, the veterinarian who was a, a Eagle Scout and an troop committee member, he offered to uh, let me come work. Um, it started first on Saturday mornings. And then as I got through high school uh, during the summer times and afternoons. And um, so that was kind of my first introduction. And that's where I, I really developed that, that passion and interest and knew that that's what I, what I really wanted to do. And then from, uh, from there, I, uh, I went to school at Purdue University. So I'm originally from Connecticut. I came out to, to Purdue to do all my education and uh, majored in animal science. I had a little uh, two-year stint doing a master's degree in beef cattle reproductive physiology uh, before attending veterinary school and then, uh, and then finished vet school at Purdue as well. Uh, during that time, I, I spent my two free summers in vet school doing some research. So I spent one summer doing transitional cell carcinoma research at Purdue. And then I spent one summer at Pfizer in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, doing reproductive toxicology work. So um, I think through that, I gained a further appreciation for all the science and medicine, but also some of the research that goes on uh, behind there. Yeah. And so I uh, came, down, came down to Fishers. I live in, in Fishers with my wife and kids. And um, I spent about six and a half years practicing in Fishers and Westfield doing general uh, small animal work. And then about 10 years ago, I had the opportunity to take a role at Elenco Animal Health. Uh, I spent seven years working in regulatory affairs. So I was uh, interacting with the, the FDA uh, for approval of of new dog and cat drugs, as well as some, I did a little bit of some swine work there as well. Um, so I spent seven years here interacting with the FDA. And now for the last three years, I've been involved in um, working on uh, in the research side. So looking at uh, the discovery and the development of, of new uh, therapeutic drugs for companion animals. Um, now through all that, through the last 10 years, I've continued to be a relief veterinarian as well. So I've spent my uh, some of my free Saturdays doing relief work in, in both Indianapolis and, and Anderson as well. And I think that's just been a really nice way to kind of keep me connected to the profession, um, you know, while still getting a chance to, to practice some of the science at Alenco. What a great story. What a great journey. All started from Boy Scouts, right? Essentially, yeah. um, you know, and, and look where the journey uh, takes you. Yep. Um, what has connected you to organized veterinary medicine? Uh, what, what has uh, drawn you to being involved in organized veterinary medicine? Sure. Yeah, I've always had an interest in being involved in different kinds of organizations. Um, it was a few years after we graduated uh, veterinary school, one of my friends and, and classmates who lived down here in the area, she was involved in the Central Indiana Veterinary Medical Association or, or CIVMA. And uh, she knew that I, I always had an interest uh, to, to be connected in those kinds of organizations. So she reached out and said, hey, you know, would you be interested in helping out a little bit? So I said, sure. Um, by helping out, I became the vice president treasurer <laughs> at the very first <laughs> meeting I, I joined. So I kind of got uh, kind of got thrown right in. But um, I think for me that was a, just a, a great experience being involved in uh, um, in some of the local organized veterinary medicine aspects. And so I spent five years on the board. Uh, I was served as president in 2010, and then again in 2012 when we had another uh, local colleague who had to, to move out of the area. Uh, so I spent five years there. Uh, I think it was just. Um, like I said, a really good way to, to get a feel or a pulse for what was going on with veterinary medicine in the area. 
And then in 2017, I joined uh, as the regional representative to the board of directors for IBMA. So I served on the board of directors for IBMA from 2017 to 2020. Um, you know, again, very interesting because then it, it gave us a chance to um, uh, get an appreciation for veterinary medicine at a state level, right? And not just local. So that was, that was how I, my involvement got started. Yeah. And and I've loved it ever since. So. They say when you volunteer, you usually get more than you give in a lot of ways. What, what has that meant to you? Yeah. So I think for me, um, number one, I think it's just uh, developing an awareness of some of the issues that are going on. Uh, you know, we know that uh, since I graduated 2005, obviously there's been, been a lot of change in the organization. So I think for me, it's important to understand um, and be aware of, of all of those changes. I like being involved in that way. I think for me, the other thing is just helping to serve others. I've always had a passion for, for serving others. And so being able to be in a position um, to you know, understand what's on people's minds and, and uh, you know, things that we can do to help them out and being able to be in a position to, um, to serve them, I think for me is, is always rewarding. And I think the third thing for me is, is networking. I, I love to network and I love to, to, to get to know people. So, you know, whether it was at the local level, local level here in, um, in the Indianapolis area or now at the state level, um, I just, I just love getting to know people and hear different perspectives and, and, and challenges they're facing and the, the fun things that they get to experience and, and hear people's backgrounds and, and just get to know them better. So I think the networking is, uh, is important as well. Yeah, the collegiality always strikes me that veterinarians, you know, connect with each other. And I think IBMA is a good platform, I hope, to, to make those connections um, in your profession and maybe meet people you wouldn't have normally have met. Yep. Um, and so I think that's really a good benefit of people getting involved and, in, you know, working on a project or task force, big or small, you know, any size in between. Um, you know, speaking of volunteering, what would you say to someone who says, oh, I don't have time or I don't have anything to contribute? What, what would be your answer to that? Yeah. So I, I think, and this is, I think everybody probably knows this, we're living in a, in a unique time right now, right, where we've been able to discover that uh, it doesn't always require extensive travel for us to be able to stay connected. And so, you know, I think one of the things that we've experienced through some of our, um, mm -hmm. our recent meetings through this pandemic is the ability to use Zoom. So I think, um, you know, you don't have to live in the Indianapolis area to be involved. In fact, I think we really want to make sure we do do uh, bring in volunteers from you know all areas of veterinary medicine and all areas across the state. And so you know, don't first off, don't feel like your geographical location in the state should ham should uh, hamper you from being involved, right? So many of the opportunities now, uh, you know, we can utilize Zoom and, and other method other methods as well mm -hmm. to stay connected. I think the other thing, and maybe this isn't directly around time, but I would say. I think one of the other important things is that there's a lot of different opportunities that we're trying to offer members. And so I would encourage members to try to find something that you might be interested in, right? If an opportunity comes up for a legislative task force, but that's not your thing, uh, that's okay. There's so many other different areas, right? There's, there's legislative things, there's membership involvement. You know, we have things now such as uh, telemedicine and, you know, upcoming we'll have things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, you know, a lot of different areas. So I would say, try to find your passion. Um, you know, I think the IBMA is always working to make sure we get those opportunities out to members. So, um, like I said, time commitment is, is not, it's not terrible. It's usually, you know, a couple Zoom calls, uh, you know, maybe one a quarter or so. Um, so it's not heavy and, and there's a lot of there's a variety of opportunities for people to be able to find something that uh, that they have a passion for. And that's what we're looking for is people that, that have an interest in one particular area. We want to connect them with that. Um, and we love getting that, uh, that diversity of input. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, of course, we would encourage, um, we have volunteer opportunities on the Ivy May website. So certainly you can visit there, or call the office or call Dr. Johnson. Um, so what might be a fun fact that you would want to share uh, with folks about yourself? Well, maybe I'll kind of continue off, uh, maybe a couple of things. One was, you know, I mentioned before that I got my start in Boy Scouts, so I will share that I did, uh, I did complete my Eagle Scout uh, mm -hmm. when I was in Boy Scouts. So I have a, a strong passion for scouting. And so that's kind of one fun fact. And I guess the other thing I'll say is over the last couple of years, um, I've gotten into uh, collecting and listening to vinyl records. So uh, through the pandemic, it's been kind of fun to, ah. uh, to be able to sit back and put on a, a vinyl record, a vintage vinyl record. And uh, that's kind of been one of my one of my new hobbies here over the last couple of years. Great. Yeah, that's kind of timeless, isn't it? When you it is. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, parting words? Anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, I think I think the first thing I would do is I would uh, would, would send a, a thank you out to 
to all those volunteers that we currently have and, and have previously volunteered with IVMA. So, you know, starting with you and Lourdes and all of our, our current and past um, board members, task force members, um, you know, the, the IVMA is, uh, I think, one of the most progressive uh, VMAs in the, in the country, to be honest. Um, you know, I think that the IVMA does a lot. We're very active. I think we're constantly trying to push ourselves to be better, to understand what the challenges are in the state, um, the needs of veterinarians, you know, what we can do to help them out. And ultimately really our goal, which we're trying to, to create some vision around is what does it look like for Indiana to be the, the best state to practice veterinary medicine in? And so, um, you know, I would say kudos to, um, to the IVMA as a whole for really trying to, uh, to stay on top of all the current issues. And then just a big thank you to all the, all the volunteers who have helped out. I think it's a, it's a great organization really trying to advocate for, for veterinary medicine in the state. And it's just been a fun, fun ride so far. Yeah, great. You raise a good point, culture. A lot of it is about culture. You know, what's the culture of the organization and do you want to be a part of it? And um, I think we have a welcoming culture and we would encourage everybody to, you know, consider giving a little bit of time. And, and of course, hats off to the people that served, you know, before you and before mm -hmm. me and, and everyone and, you know, continues to build and build and build. And that's, you know, that's what we're all about. So, yeah. well, thank you. Uh, enjoyed this very much. Um, thank you for volunteering to lead IVMA in 2021. Thank and you. Um, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Lisa.